Hi, I'm Amy Redman. Welcome back. I hope that you joined me for parts one and two of this painting. In the first section, we did our sunset skies. And in the second part, we did our oceans as well as a little sand and a mountain in the background. So now we're going to add some details in here. We're going to add some rocks perhaps here in the ocean that we can have some spray, you know, the water rushing up onto the rocks. And of course, we're going to get some waves in there on the beach, and we're going to get some reflections of the sky. So that's what part three will be about. So I wanted to just uh, remind you that in part one, I talked about the colors that are on the plate. I did add just a touch of a green oxide to my um, plate in order to get more of a turquoisey color up front here in our little tropical uh, ocean there. So that's the first thing I'm going to do, is I'm going to add just the tiniest bit of that green with some of my cobalt, that lighter blue, and some white. And I'm going to work in a little bit more of that kind of turquoisey color. I think I've got just a touch too much white on my plate, or on my brush, and so I'm going to add a bit more of my blue and green. So I'm just going to kind of play with that. And again, that color is going to be something that is closer to the shoreline because, of course, it's representing shallower water. So, again, I can kind of mellow out how much white I had on there. I'm just going to sweep that in here. And it's going to get to be a narrower bit of turquoise as it goes back. So... Add a little bit more there, and again, working in a horizontal brush stroke. So do you see how it gets thinner as it goes back? And then it starts to get a little wider. And again, I'm kind of feeling like I added just a little too much of that white in there, so I'm going to darken it up, particularly as it starts to go into a little bit deeper water here. So I like the variation that happens as you uh, add color to your brush and allow those colors to mingle on the canvas and mix as opposed to creating a color and then putting it on. So I think that we are in good shape there. Again, I'm going to just mellow this out a little bit more. Of course, because this is still wet, it is um, absorbing everything that I put on there. So it's not going to change a lot. Uh, not the way that when we let it dry it will. So again, I'm just going to add a little bit more in there, and I think we're good. So now I'm going to add in some rocks. So I'm going to wash out my brush there, and I'm still using my large flat brush. Again, this one here is a size 10. You could use a 10, maybe a 12. Again, different manufacturers have different sizes, uh, categories, and so there's not going to be a lot of consistency there. But that should be about right in that 10 to 12 size range. In this case, I'm going to now um, put some brown and some of that gold color. So again, that's raw umber and raw sienna that we're using there. I'm going to let these kind of mix on the canvas, and I'm going to add in a rock or maybe like kind of a, a little grouping of rocks right in this area here. So we're going to start out by having a horizontal line because remember that water is going to be level and so no matter how deep that rock is, of course, down to the ocean floor, it's going to look level and straight at the base of it at the top of the water. So keep that horizontal line there straight and then we're going to just kind of create more of a jaggedy sort of a thing here. Now, of course, we're not going to get good coverage in this first layer, so don't worry about that. Don't fight it. Just lay in that rock on there and let it sit there. And I can do the same thing now and add a couple more rocks. And so maybe I'll add another one right out in here. Once again, horizontal base, and it's going to kind of get craggly as it moves its way up, and it could be any which shape or size you'd like. So I think I've got kind of a larger one and a medium one, so maybe I'll do just a real small one kind of right back in here. So there's kind of a little grouping of, of rocks there. 
Now, in order to create that feeling of perspective, it might be nice to add another little group of rocks further in the distance. So that's going to be our perspective element of size that's going to, again, help fool the eye into believing that there's some distance and, and all in this, uh, on this two-dimensional canvas. So if I do the same thing back in here, that doesn't have to be the exact same grouping, of course, but I am going to kind of replicate sort of what I've got going on up here. And so maybe, maybe this one I just have a couple of rocks here. But again, horizontal base to those rocks, and then they'll work their way up. And we're going to just let those dry. We're going to need to put another layer on those. So now we're going to rinse out that brush again. And this time we're going to add in some of our nice sunset color uh, reflection into our water. So dry off that brush real nicely. And so now we want to think about, okay, what are the colors that we had in there? Now, we're not going to be completely replicating our sky, but we want to get the feeling of that it is a reflection. So I'm going to use a bit of my white and a little touch of that yellow, and I think I'll start with that. Now, I want you to notice that the, the dryness of this brush is really important. We don't want big, heavy paint on there. We want this to be very just uh, kind of sketchy and thin looking. So it's very dry, very little um, paint on the tip of my brush there. And I'm just going to use the tip there and I'm just going to very, very gently do a few little strokes there and let the dryness of the brush actually keep it wispy looking on the canvas. So now, right there with what I've got on there, I think I'll add some of those blush tones that we had created with a touch of the orange and the red and pick up maybe just a little bit more of that white. Again, very dry brush, hardly any paint on there. And I'm just going to kind of skirt right over there and add a little bit of those blush tones in there. I think I want just a hint more of my orangey red color on there. So again, very, very lightly, I'm going to add that in. And just kind of skirt that across. I'm going to go ahead and wash out my brush now, and I think I'll do a bit of the, the purple tones. So let's get a little of that going on in there. So again, a touch of white. Again, I'm almost wiping it off because I don't want too much white on there. And a little touch of purple. And I can kind of tap that off again, keeping that nice and dry on my brush. And I think I'll add some of those purple tones. Now that's a little too pale, so I'm going to pick up a little bit more of my purple. That violet color there. And I'm just going to let that kind of mingle there on the canvas as well. And now I'm going to dry that off a little bit and I'm going to sweep that so it's a little bit softer. So I've got, you know, it's already starting to dry and so we've got some of the, you know, the intenseness of how I put it on there. But now we're going to kind of soften it out just a little bit. And now we're actually going to go back in and we're going to add some of our deep blue color there. So, once again, dry that brush off real well, and we're going to do some of our dark blue with some of that purple, and even maybe a little tiny touch of that brown again. And so now, I'm going to kind of skirt that back in so that we get the rippling feel in those uh, reflections. And so some of our, our blue is showing up, and some of the reflections are, are showing up. Now I think I'm going to go ahead and bring my reflections down just a touch further and have them so that they look like they're kind of going back there. And um, so I'm going to do a touch more of my purple there and I'm going to just bring it down here so it starts to just kind of fade out. And maybe a little touch of my blush tones. 
go in there too. And I have to tell you, I almost always get my fingers into my painting, and this is one where I just, I knew I was just about to do it. Again, I'm going to just smooth that out a little bit, kind of spread them out so that we get that feeling of the rippling of the ocean there. It's not a real smooth kind of a surface, that ocean. So I think we're good with that. And so now I think we're ready to add another layer onto those rocks. So I'm now going to switch to a medium-sized flat brush. And that medium size that I'm using is a size 6. So again, somewhere in that range is probably going to work pretty well for you. And so now I'm going to go ahead and take my brown with a little touch of gold again. And again, I'm going to just kind of tap that on here and see if I can't get the coverage that I want. Now I would normally let this dry completely before trying to do a second layer. And I'm not sure it's quite completely dry, but I think it's going to be enough for our purposes here. I want to just get a little richness to my rock there, particularly at the top area. Now I can always add a little bit more of my brown on there later. And I'm adding just a little touch of the gold too so that we get some uh, feeling of like that craggliness and that there's some highlights and shadows and all of that. So it is richening up here. So I think that we're going to be okay, but it, it could certainly richen up a little bit more, so I can always add that later after I get my uh, waves crashing up on there. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same out in the ocean there, that, that one that's further away. And I think what I'm going to do is add just a little touch of dark blue to my brown, because that's going to actually darken the, the brown. And so I do want these here to be a little bit darker and not quite as much detail. And I could add some of that on up here too, and that will help to perhaps darken that up a bit. I'm going to be adding my waves at the base here, so I'm not quite as worried about the base being all nice and covered. So I'm going to now go back to my large brush. And I'm going to get some waves happening on the beach. So again, drying that off. And I'm going to tint my waves with just a little bit of color. So I'm going to pick up one of the colors here in the sky. So I think what I'm going to do is add just some of those little kind of blush tones. So I'm going to add just a hint of these orange and red colors. And you can see that I've like basically wiped it off on my plate so that there's hardly any color there. And then I'm going to take a nice big scoop of white and I'm going to start kind of laying in my waves. So I'm already starting a bit of the shape here, but now I can start to again in those horizontal brush strips, we're going to work our way up. Now again, as the waves get further away from us, they're going to get much more narrow. So we want them to get very small as they go away from us. You can just kind of tap in there. And we can even just kind of take that and sweep it across because we want just kind of an indication of those waves back there. We don't want lots of detail. And we don't want it to be too thick either. So we'll just get kind of an indication of it back in there. Or maybe all around our, our little hill there or our mountainside there. And so now I can start to create more shape here. So now that I've got that color on there, I can add just plain white over it. And now it's going to take on a little bit more life. So I'm going to start tapping. So it's kind of a, a tapping or stippling kind of an action with our white. And some of that kind of um, blush tones there are going to kind of glow through that now. So that was the purpose of putting the tint of white onto the surface of the canvas first to create our wave shape. And so now I'm tapping it and I'm getting some different effects here. You know, so they're washing up on the beach in different uh, shapes and different sizes and kind of working it there again, getting nice and, um, you know, narrow as it goes out. So it's thicker here and it's going out and becoming much more narrow. 
So I'm thinking that it could be even bigger waves right up in here. So again, I'm tapping over here. I'm working in that horizontal kind of a fashion still, just like I did with my um, sunset skies there, even though they're all kind of haphazard shapes. And I'm going to let that be for just a second. And so now I'm going to move back to my smaller flat brush. So again, that's about a size 6 there. And I'm going to start adding in some waves crashing around my rocks. So again, I'm going to take just a little bit of paint there, not too much, on the tip of the brush. And this time I'm going to just take the tip of the brush and tap in right underneath the wave, or right underneath the rock, sorry. And so I'm going to come around the bend there and I'm going to skirt it out so that it creates kind of a V as it's heading up toward the rock. I'm going to do that with each of my rocks here. And we're not going to see it go all the way past here, but just a little bit because we've got just a bit of a bird's eye view here on the rock. So it's going to come around this point here and just a little bit, and then we'll see it go all the way underneath the rock otherwise. We're going to do the same thing back here. It's not going to be quite as wide. And so again, we're going to kind of skirt that out there. Now I'm going to wipe off my brush so that I'm sure I don't have too much paint on there. And I'm going to stipple. So what I'm saying there is um, we're going to basically tap the canvas at a perpendicular angle and we're going to start getting kind of the, the wash of uh, waves rushing up on these rocks here. Again, you want it to be kind of haphazard. You don't want it to be too even. Keep it nice and natural. And it's picking up a little bit of our brown paint since that's still a bit wet. But that's okay because it just keeps it from being too solid. So I'm going to just add a little bit more of my white in there and we're getting that splash happening. So I'm using the tip of my brush and I'm not brushing, I'm tapping. So if you brush, it's going to get a little too contrived looking. So again, we're going up like that. And I could add a little bit more pure white there. Using the tip of my brush, I'm just creating some texture on top of that kind of brownish color that was created by the mix of colors. I'm going to do the same thing back in here. Oops, I got a little too white there, so I'm going to take some of my white and put it on these areas that are closer to me. And now I don't have quite as much on my brush, so that's good. I'm going to work a little bit of that up into the rocks. And again, as needed, add a little touch of white so we get a little bit more of the foamy you know, texture of those, of those waves crashing on the rocks. And so now we've got our rocks pretty much done. But now we need to kind of harmonize this and blend this out a little bit because, of course, it doesn't just wash on the shore in waves. We've got those like white caps that are kind of making their way toward the shore. So I don't want any uh, brown in my brush now. So I'm going to wash that out just in case there was some brown there. And now I'm going to stay with this medium brush and I'm going to go back into my turquoisey colors with more white. So I'm going to do just a little bit of my cobalt blue, that lighter blue with a little bit of that green, and then take some white. And again, I'm going to kind of tap this off because I don't want it to be too heavy. And so now I'm going to get kind of this feeling of the rush up on the shore. And I'm going to work in some of this color into my um, shoreline here. So I'm going to kind of sweep this out so it's not quite as solid here. And I'm going to use what's on my brush here to start creating some of these, these uh, beginnings of waves kind of making their way toward the shore here. And we can start making our way out here. We can even add a little bit of it 
in a horizontal fashion. But as they start to come up toward the shore, we want to make them a little more distinct. So I just picked up some white hair, I think, from my the foam here on the shoreline. And that's okay. I'm going to just very lightly keep tapping that in. If I want just a touch more, I can always add that again. Again, it's getting much more narrow as it goes back away from us. So don't get them way out in here. And get a touch more of this happening in here. And it's kind of curving here just a little bit, just like it is here. And I'm thinking I still need to mellow out that blush tone on my beach. So I'm going to add more white and again stipple it on so I get that kind of foamy texture. So I'm going to go like that. we could add palm trees, we could add all kinds of things to this painting, but I wanted to just get you through the skies and the ocean, waves and that crash of the waves, and so now you've very simply been able to kind of put together a nice tropical scene, and you could add whatever you'd like to that. So I hope that you've enjoyed painting with me, and I have many paintings for you to choose from if you'd like to join me sometime and do a full painting start to finish. But this is just kind of a little teaser, so I hope you've enjoyed the journey and that you'll paint with me again soon. Thanks so much.